Hey everybody, this week I'm going to take a little bit of a departure from my Tableau Tip Tuesday and I'm actually going to show you a presentation that I gave last night at the London Quantified Self Meetup. So let me go ahead and flip over to that. So uh, first you can see I'm actually using Tableau in presentation mode. So I've embedded the Prezi inside of the workbook. So like I said, I presented this last night at the London Quantified, Quantified Self Meetup group and um, it's about uh, visualizing a simpler RunKeeper training plan. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, a little bit about me. Uh, so my family is, uh, we've been living in California for the last uh, almost three years, and they're getting ready to relocate to London this weekend. So I'm super excited about them coming by. I'm also the head coach at the Information Labs Data School, and I'm a Tableau Zen Master. I maintain four blogs. One is uh, bizwiz.blogspot.com. The other one is datavizdoneright.com, which highlights data visualization best practices around the web. The third is deardata2.com. That's deer-data-2.com. And that's a project I'm doing with Jeffrey Schaefer, where we are actually doing hand-drawn data visualization postcards and um, putting them in the mail to each other. And lastly, I have my own personal blog, which is andycreeble.com, where I don't write often enough, but uh, hopefully with us now moving to London, I'll be able to write a little bit more. As far as data collection, from a non-fitness perspective, uh, most of my tracking is done via Instagram, Swarm, and Untapped. And Untapped is a uh, beer tracking app. And then I use the service IFT to uh, log uh, different things to Google Sheets. From a fitness perspective, uh, Fitbit is, is the one I probably use the most. I'm really into tracking my sleep and my water consumption on there. Of course, along with step count and challenges and things like that. Uh, our company likes to use Moves, and we're going to be actually using Moves for a project at the data school coming up in a few weeks. And then from a fitness activity perspective, I, I use uh, RunKeeper, MapMyFitness, uh, Nike Plus, and Strava. But this one, this is a story about, uh, or a case study of, uh, of um, RunKeeper. And it's, I decided to do this because I am uh, training for the Fort William Marathon right now, and I'm using RunKeeper training plans, which I find uh, quite good. However, I find their interface quite bad. So to start, when you are in RunKeeper and you are trying to analyze your training, they make it quite difficult. The first thing is you have to go to the calendar to uh, pick a date. So for example, I might need to pick uh, January, or I'm sorry, June 28th. So I go ahead and I click on June 28th. And that takes me to a second screen. It tells me I completed the activity and kind of some details about the plan. And then I have to click on this link down here that says view activity details in order to actually see more information about that particular activity. And then finally, three steps later, I get to the run itself, and it gives me a map and elevation and basic things like that. And then if I want to view another activity, I can either click at it on the left over here, or I need to go back to the calendar uh, and pick another date. So way too much, and I thought, you know what, There's a better, there has to be a better way. And I was beginning to use Alteryx, so this is the first time uh, that I was able to uh, kind of do a, I guess for me it was a complicated project in Alteryx. And I want to talk you through how I did that because um, I'm a firm believer that once you learn a new piece of software, you need to find a practical reason to um, ap apply what you learn. Okay, so as far as collecting the data, it starts with my TomTom Tom watch. So uh, after I finish a run, I sync it to my phone and the TomTom My Sports app on Bluetooth. And then once that run uh, is, is uploaded to my phone, TomTom then automatically syncs it to RunKeeper, MapMyFitness, Strava, and Nike Plus. Why I do it in four places, I don't know. I really pretty much only use RunKeeper, but I figure you know maybe there's a day when I'll want that information from another place. And then from there, um, Tim, uh, on our team introduced me to this service called Taparik. And what this does is this service will allow you to basically sync RunKeeper with Dropbox. 
And every time that uh, I upload a new activity, this service will, will monitor my RunKeeper account and it will automatically download the, the uh, GPX files to Dropbox. So that's fantastic. So now I have stuff in Dropbox and I can begin using it with Alteryx. So from a data preparation perspective, I built this workflow in Alteryx, which you can download um, uh, you know, over here on, on this link. So there's a link right here on this, on this uh, second tab here. And let me walk you through a little bit about what I did. So the first thing was I had to uh, go ahead and, and get the activity data. So what that means is basically I'm just calling that directory that contains all of the GPX files. From there, I have to do a bit of uh, formatting on the dates and I get the activity type. And then uh, I go ahead and I start calculating the distance between the points. So a lot of these calculations that I'm doing within Alteryx, I would have traditionally done in Tableau, but um, doing them in Alteryx instead makes, it, makes Tableau even faster because I don't have to do any calculations. So if you can do the calculations ahead of time, you might as well. So after I calculate the distance between points, that allows me to calculate the running total distance. Uh, pardon the pun on running there, but basically it gives me the total distance for the run throughout the run. And then I can do the same for elevation. I can calculate the elevation change from point to point, and the watch takes a measurement every second, so um, you know that's a lot of data. And then I can calculate the total elevation, and then I calculate the, the duration between each, uh, each point, which sometimes is a second, sometimes it's 20 seconds, whatever, depending on if I uh, pause my watch or not. And then I calculate the total duration, and once I have the total duration, I can calculate my speed, uh, my pace, and uh, I go ahead and flag the starting point so that I know, um, you know which, uh, which record to use when I'm drawing my maps. And then from there, uh, pardon the pop-ups there, from there I go ahead and I join it to a, um, an Excel spreadsheet that contains all of the dates for April through July because I didn't run every single day. So if I want to build a calendar view, I need to populate the data with um, basically a single record for each of the dates where I did not run. From there, I union the results and generate a Tableau extract. Okay, so once I'm in Tableau, I can go ahead and build the interface. So for this, I'm going to just go ahead and flip over to my Tableau worksheet. My mar this marathon training tab here. And you can see this is the interface that I built. I'm not gonna go through how I built each of these thing things individually. If you're interested, you can download the workbook and check it out for yourself. But um, you can see I now have everything in a single view. I've got my calendar view on the left-hand side, I have my route, and I have my elevation information. Uh, and then I also have nice little totals for the run itself and then the grand total. So you can see as of um, uh, today, or as of January 20, uh, June 28th, I've, uh, my marathon training has covered 370 miles and um, it, it doesn't look like my duration is calculating quite right, so I probably need to fix that. But anyway, um, and a couple of things that I did here was first, I've gone ahead and you can click on a particular date and see the information for that activity. So uh, you can see we've got some, you know, it's not very much elevation, but there was some elevation change there. And I've gone ahead and color coded this so that uh, anything that is from seven to nine minutes is red. So the darker the red, the faster the run is. And then the darker the blue, the slower the run is. So pretty straightforward there. And uh, so this is, this is really nice. Um, you can see that there's some gaps uh, in, the, in the elevation here. And that's because those are times when I pause my watch. So it really helps me see how often I'm actually pausing my watch during my runs. And as I hover over an elevation point, you can see up on the map that the dot is moving along the trail, which I think is pretty cool. So um, this was all pretty straightforward to build. Um, and it's allowed me to see a few things. So one of the things I've been focusing on with my training is trying to slow down on my Sunday long runs. And you can see when my training started, I was going way too fast. And then I started to learn how to slow down a little bit more. So um, these really all of my Sundays should be, you know, above nine minutes probably. Uh, so I, I, I need to continue to work on that. And you can see that pretty much all of my Tuesdays and Wednesdays, those are my speed training days. You can see those are usually dark red, which is which means that I was faster on those days, except for Sunday or except for Tuesday, June 16th. And what happened there was 
um, my watch got paused for an unusual amount of time. So the calculations, you know, kind of get jacked up a little bit. Okay, so then the other thing that I was able to do because I'm using Tableau was I went ahead and I created a parameter that allows me to select different types of paces. So this right now is showing my cumulative pace, which basically adds up along the run. So it, it, it accumulates as you go through the run. I could also look at the pace for each individual data point. Or lastly, I added a two minute average. You know, I could have made it five minute average, could have made it 10 minute average, whatever it might be, but I figured maybe two minutes was, was good. I started with one minute, but it didn't really look very different than the each segment section. So I went ahead and I thought maybe two minutes looked good. But uh, using Tableau, it allowed me to, um, you know, visualize all of my training information in one place. So really, really happy about that. Okay, so, um, for, so what are some of the things I learned? Well, first off, try something new. Um, I, I was learning uh, Alteryx at the time and I needed an, an activity or uh, I needed an exercise to go through to uh, hone my skills and to really apply what I was learning. So don't be afraid to try something new. And continue to learn. Uh, every, you know, the data school is big about learning and so is the information lab. Uh, we're, we're constantly trying to learn new things and I feel like if I go through a day and I haven't learned something, then um, I, I almost feel like it's a waste of day. So, you know, look for opportunities to learn. And lastly, I've been, I've been, uh, I, I never really thought that I would be able to run a marathon. I've run, you know, uh, probably 10 or 12, maybe even more than that, half marathons in the last few years. Uh, and I was like, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to run a marathon. But, um, you know, kind of tracking the data and analyzing it and, and looking at it, it's really helped me kind of believe in myself a little bit more and it's given me more confidence. So um, don't ever, you know, don't ever think that you can't do something. Now, there are a few things that, uh, that I would like to do at some point. Uh, since I am tracking my sleep information in uh, Fitbit, I would like to learn how uh, my sleep is affecting my training, or I'm sorry, how my training is affecting my sleep. So uh, typically, now that I've been in marathon training, I've been running in the mornings. Um, but previously, uh, you know, when I lived in California with my family, I would be training at night. Um, and I'm curious to know, you know, how has one, how has uh, running in the morning versus the night affected my sleep? and different things like that. So there's lots more I can do with this. Um, also, I'd like to be able to evaluate the, the segments of the training plans themselves, but RunKeeper doesn't make that available, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna continue to look for a way to do that. But, uh, but I guess that's it, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation, and uh, have a great day.